Hey guys, good morning to you all out there. Um, listening to me, watching to me, watching me right now is very pleasant. Good morning. This is kind of a strange time of the day for me to come to you, but you know, I just had a inspiration that come came to me just now, and I just want to share it with you. And I want to talk to you about Psalm 23. And it's an inspiration that just dropped in my spirit. You know, but before I touch into the Psalm, I want to also look. Remember, I'm just speaking to someone today. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I know that someone is experiencing something and you're wondering. Remember, the Lord says, the Bible says, I will never leave you. I'll never forsake you. So go through your storm. Go through your trials. Don't worry about the persons who don't like you. Because the honest truth of the matter is, if someone does not like themselves, neither can they like somebody. So just be reminded of that. That the Bible says that we should love our enemies as we as ourselves so um what someone depicts when they say they don't like you or when they portray that um level of hatred towards you it's just what is within them that is coming forth so you know do not be afraid of the terror that will you know a thousand shall fall at thy, thy right hand and ten thousand but it shall not come nigh thy dwelling so let me break down psalm 23 for you and some of this you might have already heard some of it will be in my own words and some of this might be something that you might have seen it says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You know that a shepherd is there to not only to protect his sheep, but to ensure that his sheep are fed, right? He make it need to lie down in green pasture. That's the shepherd's responsibility to make sure that his sheep has good feeding ground, pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. If you know anything about sheep, you know they don't like noise. They don't like any kind of rambunctiousness about them. They like peace. They like stillness. And so the Lord leadeth them beside still waters. Not, not in the ocean. Not, you know, the, the whole riverbed where, you know, you have the whole, the waves coming up and riding and whatever. No. He restoreth my soul. So that means when your strength, when your soul needs a revival, needs strengthening, he restoreth your soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. So the Lord likes righteousness. He loves um, holiness. He loves anything that is pure. He loves anything that is good. Yea, though I walk, this is my favorite part of this scripture. Yea, though I walk, walk. Mark that word, walk. Yea, though I, Marcia Harris, walk. Insert your name where that says and just say, Yea, though I, put your name inside there. Walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. Now, as I said, there are two words here that I want to focus on in verse four. Walk through. It did not say that I run. It did not say that I creep. It did not say that I do anything. I walk. And how do I walk? I'm walking through. I'm not lying down. I'm not standing. I'm not staying still. I'm going through. It's a steady progression that I'm doing. I'm going through. I'm making my way through, right? The valley of the shadow of death. So no matter what surrounds you, there may be graveyard. There may be 
um, debt. There may be all sorts of things bothering you, but guess what? They are on the side because you're going through. When you go through something, it's the middle. Think about it if you are trying to thread a needle, right? You don't put the thread to the sides of the needle, right? The sides are there. But in order for you to thread that needle with the thread, you have to push the thread through the needle's eye, right? So you're going through your valley of shadows of death. It says, for thou art with me. Yes, the Lord is with you. Thy rod. Remember, the shepherd uses his rod not only, you know, as a walking stick, but he also uses it so that he can guide you know, just guide the sheep. You can put it to the side and guide them. And, you know, so the Lord is your rod. He is using his rod to guide you and his staff. They comfort me. So they're not, there has big sticks over our head, you know, to, to flog us and to, yes, sometimes some of us, we have to get a little bit of flogging, but that's not what it's there for. It's there to comfort and to guide and to channel us through. Here's my favorite part again. God prepares the table before me in the presence of mine enemy. You know, for those of you who know me and come to my house, visit me, you know, that are close enough to get that opportunity to do that. You will always come and you'll see my table set. Yes, I keep a set table. And why is that? I grew up with my grandmother and I remember even the days before we had a dining table my grandmother would get the blocks or the sticks or whatever she would get and she would put them up and she would put like a piece of board over it and she would get her best you know those days it was like the plastic tablecloths and whatever and she would get the best tablecloth and she would keep knife and fork and plates on her table why because she said, you, you, you must always be ready for God's blessing. She always has a thing that she says, if you are prepared, you must be prepared. If you're asking for something, you must be prepared. So if you want a meal and you're planning to set a meal, you should set your table. So see if you can start practicing that at home. Set your table. Yes, prepare for your blessing. Prepare for what is to come. And I speak especially to persons who may not have all that amount of resources. But when you set your table, you're actually exercising faith that you know that the Lord will provide the meal, the resources, the whatever you need um, will come from that set table. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup run it over. So when the Lord anoints you, he's not just putting the oil on your head. He's giving you excess. He's giving you, that's why you have your cup. When your cup, so when, you, when you have your cup, make sure you have a saucer. As JB sang, he said, I'm drinking for my, I'm drinking from my saucer because my cup has overflown. A cup is sometimes small. We don't want to limit God on what he can give to us. We want to make the provision for the enough, for the overflow, for the plenty. Because I don't know about you, I know I love to give. And so when I ask God for anything and I get the overflow, I can pass it on. Yes, it only takes a spark to get the fire going. And so I want to know that when my spark comes, I can give somebody a light from it so that they can also start their own fire. And I don't know, usually I don't really do this because I don't take religion um, to Facebook, but I just got the inspiration. And so I'm just sharing it with you. It said, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever when we ask god for favor do you realize that in the bible promises when god give fulfillment you know um he said you must seek you must ask and when god give a fulfillment 
it is usually from the desire of someone's request. Jabez said, oh, that thou will bless me and enlarge my territory, right? And that you will keep your hands upon me. And the scripture continues. And so we have to learn to ask for what we want. But when we're asking for what we want, can we ask for a little bit of excess for our neighbor, for our friends, for our family? We know that our friends, our families, neighbors, co-workers might be going through a situation. But, you know, we profess Christianity, but we have never said to them, can I pray with you? We have never said to them that this is my experience when I was going through your valley moments, because we all have valley moments. We all have that moment when we feel as though we just cannot put one foot in front of the other for one reason or the other. It might be finances, it might be health, it might be just the children giving us problems, it might be relational problem with our partners, it might be just so many other things that we're going through because my valley experience, what I consider my valley experience, someone else might not consider it. Someone else, I might be worried because I don't have a job. Maybe someone doesn't have to worry about that because maybe they have a partner who's there to help them. Maybe they have a savings. Maybe they have some investment, something that they can fall back on. So my valley is not necessarily your valley and your valley is not necessarily your neighbors, your child's, your spouse's, but we all have our valley moments. However, do we stay down in the valley? Do we want to stay down in the valley? For me, I don't like to be down for too long. And so even a lot of time people might always say, oh, you're always smiling. Even when I am at my lowest hair, I tend to want to smile. Do you know why? Because no matter what you're going through, there's someone else who's experiencing more than you are. There is someone else is experiencing way more than you can even consider. Have you ever heard of the story where the man thought that, you know, he didn't have a pair of shoes and he was sad? But then when he realized, he realized that there was somebody who didn't have any feet. Right? And the person has all that shoe, no feet. Right? So no matter how we look at it, there was a story told of, you know, someone who thought that life was just not worth living anymore. And so he had one banana and he climbed up in a tree and he was like, okay, I'm just going to eat this banana and then I'm just going to jump down and commit suicide. But after eating the banana and he threw the skin down, someone came, picked up the skin and ate the skin. And he was like, uh-uh. Life is too precious. If someone can eat the skin that I've tossed down, why am I complaining? I've got more than that person has got. And so this morning, as I said, I just brought on one of my favorite scriptures for you. Take a look at it for yourself. Do your own evaluation. Make your own assessment. Come up with your own thoughts and ideas of how you want to um, replicate the scripture in your own ways, in your own thoughts. What does it mean to you? I'd love to hear you share just what Psalm 23 means to you in your own way. This is Marcia here and you know, it's not yet midday. We're still in between breakfast and lunchtime. So I'm going to just dub this little um, venture, my brunch break to you. I don't know what's in your cup. I don't know what's in your plate, but whatever it is, I pray that you'll set your saucer and that you'll have excess enough to share. Until next time, Marcia here saying, be good, be well, and have a blessed day. Bye.